In this video, I walk through over 70 screenshot tips and tricks from some of the more basic concepts to more advanced things. If you wanna get more out of taking screenshots on your iPhone, then this is the video for you. Check it out. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. So first off, how to take a screenshot. You press your volume up button and the side button like that, and then you get your screenshot. Now. You hear the little screenshot sound. If you don't want to hear that, all you need to do is flip the mute switch to turn it to silent mode. Like that. Now when you take a screenshot, you don't hear a thing. And there's the thumbnail auto dismiss time. So when you take a screenshot, you see the thumbnail there in the bottom left hand corner. It dismisses automatically after five seconds. Now you can of course quick dismiss a screenshot thumbnail just by swiping on it like that. And you may be wondering where our screenshot saved when the photo is dismissed. Well, it saves it directly to the Photos app, just like this. And when you take a screenshot, it immediately appears in the Photos app, so you don't have to wait for the thumbnail to dismiss. Now there's also a dynamically created screenshots album under media types under the albums tab in the Photos app. And this contains all of your screenshots. So when you take one, that screenshot appears within the screenshots album. Now what happens when you delete all the screenshots within that album and you go back out? Well, you can see that dynamically created album disappears and it reappears only when there's at least one screenshot available. Now for various reasons, you may wanna keep the screenshot thumbnail on the screen. So all you need to do is just tap and hold it like this for a second and release, and that will reset that five second auto dismiss timer that we talked about earlier. So that's a good way to keep that thumbnail available on the screen. You can also take multiple screenshots in succession. So you take a screenshot there, we're gonna take another, you see, you just keep taking those screenshots like that. And you'll notice that each of these thumbnails stack on top of each other, but only the last three thumbnails are actually displayed in the bottom left-hand corner, but they're still all there. Now you can drag a screenshot to apps like Messages or the Files app or into the Mail app as well. You just tap, hold like that and drag. So again, all you do on the thumbnail, tap, hold, and drag, and you can move that thumbnail to an app of your choice. So in this case, I'm going to choose the Messages app. So just open that up and open up this message thread here, and then you'll see that little green plus, see that? That indicates you can drop it right in, just like that, and we'll send that just like that. So that is one of the major benefits of the screenshot thumbnail. So I'm gonna go into the files app now, just simply drag like that, see the green plus and release, and there it goes right there within files. We can do the same thing with the mail app, open up the mail, open up a new email, and then just drop it right in to attach that screenshot, just like that. Now you can also drag multiple screenshots to an app. So you can see I'm sped things up a little bit. I'm taking a whole bunch of different screenshots here. When I tap, hold and drag, notice the little number in blue in the upper right hand corner tells you the exact number of screenshots that you have there. So 18 screenshots. So now I open up the files app, just drag all 18. You see the plus 18, let go. And you can see it adds all 18 of those screenshots to the files app. Now you can also drag screenshots directly to the Photos app or directly to albums within the Photos app. So here I have the screenshots album open. We're gonna actually go back here and we're gonna find another album. Scroll up and there's the home screen album. I'm just gonna drag, open it up and release and there you go. Now, if you try to take a screenshot of a video that has digital rights management applied to it, you're gonna notice that the screenshot is black. Now let's talk about how to open up the screenshot editor. So once you take a screenshot like this, all you need to do is tap the thumbnail to open up the editor and there you go. This is the full screenshot editor. And now we'll talk about how to exit the screenshot editor and go back to the thumbnail view. All you do is swipe up from the home indicator like that and you're back at the thumbnail view. Now you can also edit multiple screenshots at the same time. So if you take multiple, you tap on the thumbnail, it opens up the editor with all the screenshots displayed and you can scroll through just like that. Now you can take a screenshot while in the screenshot editor, of course. And when I scroll over, you'll see that last screenshot automatically appears in the editor. Now here's how to delete a single screenshot. When in the editor, all you do is go to the screenshot you wish to delete. So to swipe over like this one for that one and then tap the trash can button in the upper right hand corner and select delete screenshot. Now you can also share screenshots via the share button. So you just 
tap the share button in the upper right hand corner, and then select one of these sharing options available here within that share sheet. So of course I have my uh, messages that I can share to you, mail, reminders, airdrop. I'm gonna share it to my messages. Now what you'll see is it shares all the screenshots that are currently displayed in the editor, just like that. Now you can long press the thumbnail to bring up that share screenshot interface as well. Keep holding it just like that so you don't have to have to actually open the editor to share screenshots. Now, you can also rename screenshots. We're gonna go back into that share menu and then tap rename. And now I can rename that screenshot just like that. Now, the great thing about rename screenshots is that uh, that name will be used for the file name just like that when saving to the files app, as you can see there. Now, of course, you can also rename a screenshot from the editor view as well. So you just open up the editor, tap on the share button, tap rename and rename it just like that. So this time I'll share to mail and notice the subject name is the name of the screenshot. You can also delete a screenshot using the done menu in the editor. So open up the editor, tap done in the upper left hand corner and then select delete screenshot. And that gets rid of that screenshot. And if you have multiple screenshots opened in the editor, if you tap the done menu, you'll see the amount of screenshots when opting for delete. So in this case, delete two screenshots, just like that. Now you can also copy and delete a screenshot. You see the photos app has no screenshots listed there. So I'm going to take one, but it's not going to store in the photos app because I'm going to copy and delete. So bypassing the, the photos app, but still having it on my clipboard so I can use it in another app. So if I open up photos, you see no screenshot listed there. But again, that screenshot is still on the clipboard. So I open up messages, paste like that, and there we go. So bypassing the Photos app. But of course you can also save screenshots to the Photos app. So if we open up the editor, we tap done and just select save to photos and that will save that screenshot directly to the photos. So we open that up and we're gonna be able to see that screenshot just like that. Now you can also save screenshots to the Files app as well. So we take a screenshot, open the editor, tap done and select save to file. So we do that. It opens up the Files app interface and there we have the various options. For instance, we can rename that screenshot if we want to. We can give it a, a tag if we want to do that. Pretty straightforward stuff here. But now we can save that directly to the Files app for easy access. Now you can also save screenshots to a quick note. So in the editor, tap done, tap save to quick note, and there we go. So this can be very handy if you want to add notes to that screenshot for future reference. You see I have a couple there and there's a note there. Super handy. Now let's talk about toggling markup mode. So when we open up the editor, you're gonna see markup mode here is enabled. So you see the various tools, but there is a markup mode button in the upper right hand corner. You tap that and that will disable the markup. All the tools disappear and you can quickly switch between the two. Now, one of the benefits of disabling markup mode is being able to crop and resize without actually marking up the screenshot by accident. So here you can see I can mark up like that. Well, I don't wanna do that. So let's go ahead and undo real quick, disable markup mode. And now when I move my finger on the screenshot, nothing appears there. Now here's how to crop and scale a screenshot. So we're gonna open that up. Obviously markup mode is disabled. And then you'll see the drag handles in the corners on the bottom. And you can use those handles to crop that screenshot. And those handles make it very easy to fine tune your crop. Just like that. Now you'll notice when you crop and release, you'll notice that the screenshot is re-centered in the center of the interface like that. I could do so right here as well. And that's really cool. Now, again, you can also scale as well just by using a two finger pinch gesture and kind of get that thing finessed to the exact area that you want. Now notice the thumbnail, once you exit out of the editor, adopts the same aspect ratio as the screenshot itself, which is really cool. So just like any normal unedited screenshot, you're gonna be able to drag and drop that thumbnail to share that screenshot with another application. For, so for instance, in this case, the Messages app, I can go ahead and send that edited screenshot that's all nice and cropped. Here's another really cool thing about the cropping interface. So once you do so, and it resizes and centers on that cropped screenshot, you can, of course, restore things just by cropping back out. So now let's talk about how to select text from a screenshot. So take a screenshot like that and all you do is tap and hold on any of the text that you see. And obviously this was with markup mode disabled, but then you can use that to do all sorts of things, copy the text, search the web, etc. 
So let's grab some more text. I'm gonna actually zoom in like that and now just tap and drag to select that text. Now I'm gonna show you how to copy all text from a screenshot. So all the text that appears on that screenshot, if you tap this button in the bottom right hand corner, you can just tap copy all after that. It copies all that text. Let's open up a new note and paste all that text in there, just like that. You can also use visual lookup from the screenshot editor interface. So you wanna make sure that markup is disabled and you'll see in the bottom left hand corner, if it detects something within the scene, you tap that and it performs a visual lookup. In this case, an Apple Music album. Now let's test visual lookup with another screenshot. So I took this screenshot here of this orchid and you'll notice no visual lookup appears, but that's because there's too much going on in the scene. So what I'm gonna do is just crop out all the extra nonsense there and you can see visual lookup appears. Now I just simply tap that and I get the details on what that is, just like that. Pretty cool feature. You can also use the select text feature to navigate to the web. So I just tap the select text button. There you go. It selects all the text available, but it finds the URL for Electrek as you can see there. So I just simply tap that and it opens up Electrek's website. That can be very handy. Now let's talk about the markup writing tools available within the screenshot editor. So you have various tools like the pen tool. As you can see there, you have the highlighter. As you can see there, you have the pencil with its various texture like that. And of course, there are other things we'll talk about later, but each tool is assigned its own independent color uh, and it will stick with that color until you change it. So you can see blue here, yellow for the highlighter, black for the pin. So watch what happens when I select a new color for the pin and I'm going to choose, let's see, let's find blue there. And I'm gonna choose a different color for the highlighter. Let's go ahead and make that orange. So we'll find orange, there we go. And then finally we have our pencil and we'll make that, how about green? Like that, okay. So we have those three colors assigned to each of those items. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna delete the screenshot, create a new screenshot and notice that each tool retains its color that we last set. Now let's talk about how to change markup tool settings. So once you select one of the tools, you simply tap that tool again. This will open up an individual settings panel for each tool where you'll find the stroke weight and you'll also find the opacity slider. So here you can see me changing up the stroke weight. And now let's slide the opacity slider and change the opacity. And the same thing goes for the highlighter but you'll notice that each tool with the opacity, the highlighter has a different threshold for the opacity. So the maximum opacity will still show what's behind that highlighter, in other words. Whereas with the pen tool, if you have the opacity set to 100%, it's totally opaque. Now you can quickly tell stroke thickness by looking at the little line on each tool. So notice when the stroke is light like that, you can see the line on the tool is very thin and then it will increase in thickness as you move up like that. So same thing goes for the highlighter. So maximum, minimum, and then go up like that. You can also quickly tell the tool opacity. When you slide, you'll notice a number that represents the current opacity level. So zero, gonna be completely transparent. And I slide up 60, I guess 66, etc. And the same thing goes for all the tools. So if it's at a hundred percent, it won't actually show a number, but anything between zero and 99, it will show the number for the opacity. Now the opacity can be changed either via the tool setting, like I just showed you like that. You see I'm at zero or via the color picker. So I'm at zero in the color picker and I change that there and that change is reflected back on the individual tool as well. So let's talk about the eraser tool. It defaults to the pixel eraser, so you can just tap and drag like that to erase any of the markup. You tap the tool, you can change the size of the pixel eraser like this. So if you want that size, if you want it to be a little bit bigger, we can switch over to the largest size. You can see how large that eraser is. Now, you can also switch to the object eraser. 
So you have pixel eraser, object eraser, and when you select the object eraser, you see the X on the eraser. Now what this does is it deletes the entire object when you come into contact with that. So every continuous stroke is treated as a single object and that will delete that stroke just by tapping it or dragging over close by it. Now, the selector tool allows you to select the various markup you have on the screen like that. So all you do, just draw around the object you want to select. And of course you can use a smaller selection radius to select smaller markup on the screen. You see, I select that and now you can just simply drag. What's cool though, is you can also long press to select multiple items, just like this. You can just drag your finger to select multiple items. So I'm gonna drag this guy, have it selected. Let's move it up there. Now you'll notice also when you long press, you see the drag handles. So you can refine your selection using the drag handles like this to really key in on a certain area. Now you can also tap to select all when you have the selector tool enabled. So with the tap, you can select all the markup and drag like that. Now let's talk about the ruler and what's cool, you can just simply tap on it to enable or disable like that. But what's really nice is that you can use other markup tools, other drawing tools while the ruler is being displayed on the screen. And that's obviously helpful because that can be used to draw straight lines. And I'll show you that in just a second, but now let me show you how to lock in on a specific angle. If you use a two finger drag like this, you can snap to 45 degrees, zero degrees, 90 degrees. But again, one of the main reasons why you want to use the ruler tool is to draw a straight line like that. Do another one. Now, here's something I wanna show you as well. You can use the ruler tool with the drawing tool to have the exact pixel distance of your markup. So you can see 878 pixels across, and you can use this tool to get more exact measurements when drawing on screen. Now let's talk about how to use the color picker. So you tap the color picker in the bottom right hand corner, you select the color you wanted to use. Uh, obviously you'll have your tool selected as well. And it really is that simple, but you have your grid. You also have your spectrum and you have sliders. If you really want to dial in a very specific color, you can e even use a hex color if you want to do that. And of course there's the opacity, etc. All right. So we have this color selected right here. Let's go ahead and draw a line like that. Go ahead and select a different color, draw another line. So now let me show you a couple of ways to invoke the color picker. So you can just open it up like I just did there, select your color, or you can long press like this, choose your color and release. And that's just a quicker way to select colors. Now you can add and delete colors from the color picker. Here's the canned colors that we have by default. Uh, you can go in, select a new color like that. And then you just simply tap the plus button to add that to your color picker as a shortcut. Let's add another. So you can easily select that just like that. So we're going to add orange, tap the plus button. And now we have orange as a shortcut. Now, what if you want to delete one of these shortcuts? Will you just long press on any of them and tap delete? And this also applies to any of the colors saved as favorites. And while you're in the color picker, use the eyedropper tool to select specific colors from your canvas. So you tap the eyedropper in the upper left hand corner of the picker. And now you simply drag to select the color. It automatically launches the color picker. You can add that as a favorite. And now we have the exact color pool from the screenshot. Now let me show you how to move screenshots after marking up. So you just exit the editor, tap and drag the thumbnail and drop it wherever you want to share it just like that. Now, what if you just exit the screenshot editor after you're finished marking up? Well, once you do, it does just like it normally does shows the thumbnail, but after five seconds, it's dismissed it automatically saves to the photos app. Now let's talk about how to undo and redo changes. So I'm making a whole bunch of changes here. Now at the top, you'll see the undo button. I tap that you can see those strokes are being undone. Keep tapping. And we're back. Now we can redo pretty cool. Now you can also see undo order 
if you long press on the undo button, you can see undo added strokes or undo all. So you can see undo added strokes. So you can just continue to do that. It'll tell you what you're undoing. Now I'm going to switch to the eraser tool, erase like that. Now I'm going to long press again on the undo and you can see undo erase this time. And you can also undo all changes, just long press and select undo all to get rid of everything. Now undo redo is on a per screenshot basis. So if I make changes to this first screenshot, all my undo and redo actions will be limited to that one screenshot like that. So if I undo again, undo all, I'll scroll back over to this page here. I can undo and that only affects that page. And the same thing goes for all the pages. Okay. So you can also add an image description to screenshots. And to do this, we're going to open up the little toolbox here in the bottom right hand corner for the first time you tap that little plus button. And there you'll see a whole bunch of additional options. The first one being description. So you tap that and then you have a little field where you can add an image description. And this is used for the accessibility feature voiceover. Now you can also quickly add text to screenshots. So tap the plus tap text. And there you go. The text appears right here. You can drag it around with your finger just like this. And there's all sorts of other ways you can manipulate this text. And of course you can drag the bounding box of the text to adjust the size of the field like that. And then if you tap this button in the bottom left hand corner, you can change the font. So you have Helvetica, Georgia, and no noteworthy. We're going to stick to Helvetica. You can increase the text size and you can change the justification like that. Now you can also change the text color as well. So you have these can colors here, but you can also use the color picker and select your own text color like that. So this is a simple markup feature, but very important. If you need to add specific text to a screenshot, you can do so with ease. And of course, if you tap that text box, you can cut, copy, delete, edit, or duplicate that text as well. Now you can also add signatures to your screenshots. If you tap the plus button and select signature, I don't have a signature added yet. So I can just sign my name with my finger like that. If I don't like that, I just have clear sign it again. And yeah, we'll, we'll go with that one. So if I tap new signature at the top, I can give it a label, custom label, initials, nickname, family name, given name, full name. So in this case it's full name. So we'll select that. But if I want to add a custom label, I can do that. Just go down to custom and I'll give it the appropriate title chicken scratch done. So now I can tap done again and my signature is placed right there on the screenshot and I can adjust the size like that, drag it around. But now when I tap plus and I tap signature, the signature that I saved as chicken scratch is there and I can add that at any time. And of course this is a markup feature. So I can add that to PDFs for instance, if I need to sign a PDF. Now I'm going to add another signature. Of course you can remove them as well. And I'll just put my initials, select initials, tap done. And it places it right there. But the cool thing is when I go ahead and select signature here, you'll see I get both options just like that. Now you can also quickly change your screenshot opacity. And let me show you why this could be useful. So I'm going to just draw here on the screenshot. Now I'm going to move that there. You can see it's kind of hard to see what I drew. So if you tap the plus button and select opacity, you can change the opacity of just the screenshot itself. And it doesn't actually affect the markup. So you're able to see the markup more clearly if the background is busy. Now you'll also find the magnifier tool if you tap the plus button and what this does, well, it magnifies areas of the screenshot here. So like I'm doing now, you can just simply drag that magnifier around and target specific areas that you wish to magnify. Now you can also adjust the settings of the magnifier to increase the magnification and to increase the diameter of the magnifier. So if you drag that little blue button there, you can notice how you can increase the diameter of the magnifier. But if you drag the green button, you'll notice that you're able to change the magnification as well. So let me just drag that. You can see, drag that on the, on the line of the magnifier and I can increase the magnification significantly. Pretty cool, right? So this tool really helps you to focus on a specific area of the screenshot and you can do more. If you tap this button there in the bottom left hand corner, you can increase the width of the outline for the magnifier. 
you wish to do that, like that. And of course you can change the color using one of the canned options or you can go into the color picker for more customization. Now, if you tap the plus button, you'll find several shape tools for to be exact at the bottom. So you have your square tool. You just can place that right there on top of your screenshot. You can add the circle, you find the quote and the arrow and you can adjust each of these shapes to a degree. So let me just adjust the size of the circle. You can do the same thing for the quote, but you'll notice the little green dots on the quote allow you to change the location or the, the direction of where the quote comes from. And the same principle applies for the arrow. You get the little green dot on the arrow that allows you to adjust the arrow like that. Now, if you tap on the shape, you can cut, copy, delete, and duplicate. I really like the duplicate function because you can come up with some pretty cool looking designs like that. Let me just continue to duplicate like that. And you can get real creative there, but you can also change the shape thickness, the border and the fill color. If you tap this button in the bottom left hand corner, you can change the shape thickness. You can add that fill if you wish to, or remove the fill and have extra thick borders. And you could do the same for all the shapes there. The arrow is a little bit different though. You'll notice the arrow gives you some different options. You can change the arrow to remove the ends of the arrow like that. And of course change the thickness. So you just have a line basically. You can use a single arrowhead or a double arrowhead if you wish and change the thickness of those as well. So pretty nice little function. And of course you can change up the colors if you want to do that. And the same thing goes when you have a full on fill. So you can get really creative with this. Now you can also use smart shapes that this is really cool. So if you draw a line and you hold your finger, it will automatically create a line, a straight line. If you have a curved line and you hold your finger, it automatically creates a curved line. Same thing for a circle like that or oval or a triangle. Just hold your finger at the end and it will automatically suggest the shape that it can create for you. So here I have a pentagon. Here I have an arrow, a heart I can create, a star. And you can use this feature in unique ways. For instance, if I want to create stair steps, I can do that. It's pretty awesome. I can even create a quote. Nice. Now you can also filter edited screenshots in the photos app. So say I edit this screenshot to remove the status bar like that. Go ahead and just dismiss it. It adds it to the photos app. Now when I go into photos, I can filter on those edited screenshots. So we'll go into the screenshots album. There's 28 there. Now if we tap the little ellipsis in the upper right hand corner and we select filter, you'll notice an option for filter for only show edited. So I select that one done. And now you see, I only have 18 screenshots instead of 28 because 10 of them were unedited, but here you can see the edited one I have and I can go back in and select all items. And now I'm back to the 28. Now I can also revert to the original screenshot in the photos app. So this is the edited one where I remove the status bar. But if I tap edit, you'll see the revert button in the bottom right hand corner. I tap that revert to original and there's my status bar back. Now you can also use Siri to take a screenshot. So just say, Hey, take a screenshot and it takes a screenshot. You can also take a screenshot with a back tap on your phone. So if you go into accessibility, touch and back tap, you can choose one of the options there for screenshot, either double tap or triple tap. So if I do a double tap on the back of the phone, it takes a screenshot. You can also take a screenshot with shortcuts and there's many ways to do this, but I'm going to go to the automation tab, select a personal automation, and I'm going to choose just, I'm going to choose charger. So whenever I am charging my phone, it will create a screenshot or take a screenshot that is. So obviously this is just a test, a demonstration. I haven't gone all out to save the screenshot, etc. but I just want to show you the concept, plug it in. It takes that screenshot. Now you can get the latest screenshots via shortcuts if you want to as well. So we're going to add a new action, get latest screenshots. And I'm going to choose get the latest five and we'll add some more to this so we can actually display it. 
So I'm going to add a quick look to show those latest screenshots in quick look. So I'm going to rename it, show my screenshots, tap done, and then I'll take a bunch of screenshots and then I'll ask Siri to show my screenshots. So just take a bunch of screenshots here. Now we'll ask Siri, show my screenshots and we'll get that quick look window with all the screenshots there, the last five. So that's one way you can quickly get your latest screenshots with shortcuts. Now there's advanced markup tools as well in the notes app. So you have your familiar markup tools, the pen, the pencil, the eraser, but you also have this little pen right here for more consistent lines. You also have the fountain pen as well. That's pretty nice. So you want to get fancy. You also have the airbrush tool. And if you tap the plus button, you'll see add shape. You have several more shapes, shapes that you could only previously create using smart shapes. So like for instance, the star is there by default. So the nice thing about this, of course, you can resize. You can also drag this little green guy and increase the number of sides for the triangle. So you can go from three sides up to 10 sides to create a decagon, or you can go back to just three sides for a triangle. And you can adjust the border color and the border size. So I change the color, change the size, and you can also change the fill color if you wish to do that. So we'll go ahead and show you that. So tap there, choose the fill color, and you can also adjust the opacity for the shape in general just like that. So we'll create a couple more shapes. So you have your arrow and even a rounded rectangle is there, which we know is very popular when it comes to design. So when taking a screenshot from an app or from the home screen, you know what the screenshot interface looks like. But when you take a screenshot of a Safari page, you're going to notice a little bit of a difference in the way that interface looks like when you go into the screenshot editor. Let me show you what I mean here. So take a screenshot, open up the editor and now you see two tabs at the top, one for screen for the normal screenshot and one for full page. And this captures the entire page of that Safari browser. That's very handy. You can still mark it all up, but instead of saving this as an image, it saves it as a PDF. So you can use the little sidebar to scroll up and down. Of course, you can also tap the crop button to crop the area of the web page and it will resize tap done. So now we've shortened that significantly. And now when we want to save that PDF, we can just tap save PDF to files and we save that to the files app. And this full page screenshot feature isn't just limited to Safari, but it works for things like pages documents as well. So there you go. There's our PDF marked up and ready to share. Have you ever wanted to capture a screenshot of a specific moment on your phone, but it's hard to do so just because of the animations that are occurring? Well, if that's the case, then what I recommend is using screen recorder, performing whatever action you want to capture. For instance, launching this app, I want to capture the animation mid launch. And then once you do navigate to that exact point in time on the video it creates and create a screenshot of that video. And now you have a screenshot of something that was almost impossible to capture otherwise. So ladies and gents, that's an in-depth look at screenshots on iOS. What is your favorite tip or trick? Let me know down below in the comment section. And if you like in-depth videos like this, let me know as well. And be sure to check out other in-depth walkthroughs and tutorials that we've made right here. Thanks for watching. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.